Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of your fatal trip. It started in the firmament and then we all got tricked. Life was great when we were young with all the things we believed. Then it all got hard, unbearable, and we know we're being deceived. Forgotten, ignored, secret and hidden. Topics that talk about how. Water is knowledge, now drink from the fountain. Let's pour some on you now. Hello everybody, welcome to Plain Mundane Show. I'm Alex, your host. Thank you for coming. Today we're going to talk about someone who was, let's see if you can guess who this is. He was born on December 25th. He was crucified, he resurrected, and his mother bore him as a virgin. Can you guess? If you guessed Addis, you're right. You knew. All right. Let's read about Addis. This is a marble bust of Addis wearing a Phrygian cap from the second century AD or common era. And this is from Paris, okay? That's Addis. Who is Addis? Some of you might be asking, who is Addis? Or maybe you've already heard something about this before. Maybe you've seen some kind of zeitgeist movie or reference to uh, whatever all that stuff is, you remember? And you never got into it. But uh, let's review who's Addis. This is from an article written on the uh, Truth Be Known website by D.M. Murdoch Acharya. There's an, a Spanish version and an Italian version. In many mythicist writings, the ancient Phrygia Roman god Attis is depicted as having been born of a virgin mother on December 25th, being killed and resurrecting afterwards. Here we shall examine the evidence for these contentions, which parallel the gospel story and Christian tradition concerning Jesus Christ. Providing a summary of the mythos and ritual of Addis, along with the comparisons to Christian tradition. Professor of Classics and Ancient History at the University of Manchester, Dr. Andrew T. Fear states, The youthful Addis, after his murder, was miraculously brought to life again three days after his demise. Let me interject there, folks. Let's get back to his murder, because when you're talking about Tammuz and Astarte, the Horror of Babylon, that's where the same story occurs as well. The murder of the sun. The celebration of the cycle of death and renewal was one of the major festivals of the Metroic cult. Addis therefore represented a promise of reborn life. And as such, it's not surprising that we find representations of the so-called mourning Addis as a common tomb motif in the ancient world. The parallel, albeit at a superficial level, between this myth and the account of the resurrection of Christ is clear. Moreover, Addis, as a shepherd, he was a shepherd too, occupies a favorite Christian image of Christ as the good shepherd. Further parallels also seem to have existed. The pine tree of Addis, for example, was seen as a parallel to the cross of Christ. Okay, so if you put a pine tree air freshener in your car, it's just like putting up there a cross if you're Christian. Beyond Addis himself, Sibel, too, offered a challenge to Christian divine nomenclature. Sibel was regarded as a virgin goddess, and as such could be seen as a rival to the Virgin Mary. Sibel was the mother of the gods, Matridium, here again presented starkly pagan parallel to the Christian mother of God. There was rivalry, to, rivalry too, in ritual. Ritual. <laughs> The climax of the celebration of Addis' resurrection, the Hilaria, what a name, fell on the 25th of March, the date that the early church had settled on as the day of Christ's death, 25th of March. As we can see, according to this scholar, Addis is killed, fixed to a tree, and resurrects after three days, while his mother is regarded as a virgin goddess comparable to the Virgin Mary. These conclusions come from the writings of ancient pagans, as well as the early church fathers, including Justin Martyr, Clement of Alexandria, Hippolytus, Tatian, Tertullian, Augustine, Arnobius, and Firmicus Maternus. 
I was just talking about Firmicus maternus uh, last week to a friend of mine. Not really. <laughs> Born of the Virgin Nana. And that doesn't mean your grandma. Bella and Nana. Like the Egyptian goddess Isis and the Christian figure Mary, Nana, Sibel, is a perpetual virgin, despite her status as a mother. The scholarly term used to describe virgin birth to as Parthenos, the Greek word meaning virgin. This term is applicable to the Phrygian goddess Sibella, Nana, as well. You know, I've been to the Parthenon in, in uh, Athens, and I didn't know that had to do with the word virgin, that whole mountain, that whole temple. It's a temple to the Virgin. It's exactly this one, too. It's Greco. Well, we'll get to the Greco. The, the diverse names of Addis's mother and her manner of impregnation are explained by Dr. David Adams Leeming, professor of emeritus of English and comparative literature at the University of Connecticut. Addis is the son of Sibeli, and her form is the Virgin, Nana, who is impregnated by the divine force in the form of pomegranate. Isn't there also a horror of Babylon named Inanna? with two ends regarding Nana the virgin mother goddesses of antiquity dr. Marguerite Rigolioso states another instance of spontaneous conception occurred when Nana whose very name was one by which the great goddess was known became pregnant simply by eating the tree's fruit oh here we go with a, a virgin woman eating some tr fruit from the December 25th or winter solstice birth of the sun god is common theme in several cultures around the world over in the past millennia, including the Egyptian among others. As it is for the Perso-Roman god Mithra, the Egyptian god Horus, and the Christian god man Jesus, this date has likewise been claimed for Addis's nativity as well. For example, Barbara G. Walker writes, Addis's passion was celebrated on the 25th of March, exactly nine months before the solstitial festival of his birth, the 25th of December. The time of his death was also the time of his conception or reconception. Each year Addis was born at the winter solstice. In this same regard, Shirley Tolson remarks, in the secret rites of this great mother, the young god Addis figured as her acolyte and consort. Each year he was born at the winter solstice, and each year as the day shortened, he died. The reasoning behind this contention of the vegetative and solar god Addis's birth at the winter solstice is sound enough, in that it echoes natural cycles, with the god's death at the vernal equinox also representing the time when he is conceived again to be born nine months later. Moreover, at times the young Addis was merged with Mithra, whose birthday was traditionally held on December 25th, and with whom he shared the same Phrygian capped attire. Now this picture is a marble bust, a Phrygian cap. See that cap? Kind of looks like a Keebler elf to me, you know. And then there's a picture below. It looks almost like the same face. Look at that, the same face, same cap, same type of hair. See that with the locks that curl, thick locks that curl. Same look, but this is Mithra. This is Mithra, the Roman Jesus, prior to Jesus, in a Phrygian cap. This is in the British Museum of London, and this is from Rome in the second century AD. So who are Phrygians? Let's stop for a second, and let's go to Wikipedia, and let's look up who are Phrygians. All right? The Phrygians, Greek, were an ancient Indo-European people initially dwelling in the southern Balkans, according to Herodotus, under the name Bryges, changing it to Phrygias after their final migration to Anatolia via the Hellespont. Anything that says Hellas is usually to do with Athens or Greece. The Balkan origins of the Phrygians are debated by modern scholars. From tribal and village beginnings, the state of Phrygia arose in the 8th century BC with its capital, Gordium, Oh, it's a ruin. Neat. Arose in the 8th century BC around 690. Cimmerian invaded. Didn't Cadillac have a car called the Cimmeron? Wow, how did they get those names? Phrygia was briefly conquered by its neighbor Lydia before it passed successively into the Persian Empire of Cyrus the Great and later Empire of Alexander and his successors 
After this, it was taken by the Attalids of Pergamon and eventually became part of the Roman Empire. The last mention of the Phrygian language and literature dates to 5th century AD, and it was likely extinct, extinct by the 7th century. The Phrygians spoke Phrygian, an Indo-European language. Some contemporary historians, among whom Strabo was the best known, considered the Phrygians to be a Thracian tribe, part of a wider Thraco-Phrygian group. Other linguists dismissed this hypothesis since Thracian, and hence Daco-Thracian, seems to belong to the Satem group of Indo-European languages, while Phrygian shared several similarities with other Indo-European languages of the Centum group, like Latin, Greek, or the Anatolian languages. Wow, this is all this Balkan Anatolian stuff. That's Phrygia, basically. Okay, let's get back to the article. Crucified. The myths of Attis' death include him being killed by a boar or by castrating himself under a tree, as well as being hung on a tree or crucified. Indeed, he has been called the castrated and crucified Attis. Should be noted that the use of the term crucified as concerns gods like Horus and Attis does not connote that he or they were thrown to the ground and nailed to a cross, as we commonly think of crucifixion based on the Christian tale. In reality, there have been plenty of ancient figures who appeared in the cruciform, some of whose myths specifically have them punished or killed through crucifixion, such as Prometheus. The god has been called the castrated and crucified Attis. Moreover, Attis is said to have been crucified to a pine tree, while Christ, too, was related as being both crucified and hung on a tree. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. That's in Acts 5.30. And we are witnesses of all the things which he both did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. That's in Acts chapter 10, verse 39. As stated by the Latrobe University professor, Dr. David John Tracy, I'm sorry, Tass Tacy, Especially significant for us is the fact that the Phrygian Attis was crucified upon the tree. In antiquity, these two concepts were obviously similar enough to be interchangeable in understanding. Tomb, three days, resurrected. We've already seen Dr. Fear's commentary that Attis was dead for three days and was resurrected. Worth reiterating here, the youthful Attis, after his murder, was miraculously brought to life again three days after his demise. The death and resurrection in three days, the Passion of Attis, is also related by Professor Merlin Stone. Roman reports of these rituals of Sibel recorded that the sun was first tied to a tree and then buried. Three days later, as a light was said to appear in the burial tomb, whereupon Attis rose from the dead, bringing salvation with him in his rebirth. Concerning the discovery of a throne at Herculaneum, Italy, buried in the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, archaeologist Dr. Mark Maroni remarks, unusually the throne is carved with the scenes depicting the mystery of the cult of Attis, which spread to Rome from Turkey via Greece during the reign of Claudius in 41 to 54 AD. Essentially, historical texts indicate that this cult was concerned with the life, death, and resurrection of the goddess, and involves several key stages enacted in March. The procession of the reed bearers and flute blowers, the entrance of the sacred pine tree, the burial of the effigy of Attis strapped to a stake, mourning, sacrifice, bloodletting, and the resurrection of Attis. The best preserved scene on the throne shows the deity collecting a pine cone next to a sacred pine tree. There is a debate as to when the various elements were added to the Attis myth and ritual. Contrary to the current fad of dismissing all correspondences between Christianity and paganism, the fact that Attis was at some point a dying and rising god is concluded by Dr. Trigov Medinger, a professor of the Old Testament studies at the University of Lund and the author of The Riddle of the Resurrection, who relates, Since the time of Demetius of the 6th century AD, Attis seems to have been believed to die and return. By that point, we possess clear discussion in writing of Attis having been resurrected, but when exactly were these rites first celebrated and where? Attis worship is centuries older than Jesus worship and was popular in some parts of the Roman Empire before and well into the Christian era. 
In the case of Attis, we possess a significant account of his death and mourning in the writings of the Greek historian of the first century BCE, Diodorus Siculus, Siculus, including the evidently annual ritual creation of his image by priests indicative of his resurrection. Hence, these noteworthy aspects of the Attis myth are clearly pre-Christian. The reason these motifs are common in many places is because they revolve around nature worship, solar mythology, and astrotheology. All right, folks, thank you for coming to Plain Mundane Show. This is who Attis is, another one of your pre-Christ figures with the same life. Now think about it, even in your New Testament, as I was reading the end there, that's all in Greece with Paul. Those are his journeys to Thessaloniki, Colossensis, Galatia. I've been to those towns uh, on chicken farms. And I remember thinking, wow, I'm taking the journey of Paul. But the Bible came to you from the Roman emperor. And it seems like before the Romans and the, the Romans and the Romans, the Romans and the Phrygians, uh, the same story has been carried down through many, many, many times. Like, started with Tammuz. Then there was, uh, you know, there's about 13, 14 different. You can look up all the stories that are the same. The one I'm remembering is Tammuz was murdered or, or suspiciously died. He was married to his mother, who was considered the whore of Babylon, uh, known as Inanna or Astarte. And then when he died, she told her people after three days, he is risen and he's now in the sun and he's now your sun god Baal or Baal. That's how the sun god Baal became because... She just invented resurrection and said, whoop, he's up in the sun now and he's your sun god. So that story is tens, if not maybe even hundreds of thousands of years old. You know, so the, the first depiction of Christ going through the things that we find in the Bible. I believe he existed and had a life, but we need to learn what he did and what he really talked about. Some of the truth is, I believe, is in the book, but it's uh, it's got a lot of holes in it and it's twisted and the, the main story theme is reversed. It's made into an anti-Christian book, actually, in a lot of, you know, ways. So please hit like, subscribe, ring that bell, and just wait till I put up a new video. Bye.